we'll go with that. If you don't see me back there today uh, feeding my face, uh, I'll be over at the house. I told Susan that she, when I finish back here, she'll carry me to the house. But come on back over and, you know, and get a couple of plates. <laughs> fill it up because I might get hungry this afternoon, you know. <laughs> Father, I just thank you for this time that we can meet as the body of Christ. And Lord, even though I have a sense of humor, I'm dead serious in what I preach and teach. And I live it. And my wife lives it 24-7. And we thank you. We can live it because we let you live it through us. It is Christ in us and our only hope of glory. And we thank you that you live big in every one of us. And we just give you the praise and the glory as the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon everybody. And supernaturally, we will understand and comprehend the word of God and be able to walk it out daily in our lives. And we just want to thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to hit Romans 6 just a little bit, but I'm going to give you a little background here. When you read Romans, starting with verse 1, you'll see that Paul is talking about the human race. And all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Chapter 1 talks about that. Uh, man has no excuse. Even nature itself uh, shows you that there is a God. And so he makes that very clear. And then he goes to chapter 2 and he talks about the religious people. And uh, he basically, I'm paraphrasing it, but he said, you're a bunch of hypocrites and, and you're lost too. You need to be saved. And that was the Jewish people that he was talking to in chapter 2. And then he went on in chapter 3, began to see, he lumped them all together and said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Jew and Gentile. And we said, oh boy, we've had it now. But the good news is the very next verse in chapter uh, 5, and it reads like this. Therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God through faith, Remember, everything is through faith. This is, I'm sorry, I didn't give you, I give you Romans 5.1, I'm sorry. Romans 5.1, forget me. I get ahead of myself sometimes. Now this, this is what we want to concentrate on. If you're saved, we're on this side of the cross. And uh, Dave, would you get the cross for me? bring up here therefore therefore what's the therefore therefore well when you read Romans 1 and 2 and 3 but therefore since we are justified say I'm justified, justified. say you got to see yourself justified say you got to learn to say what you believe not what you feel man if I told you how I felt this morning we won't go that way but I'm telling you that God has already justified. You don't have to try to be justified. You don't try to be good enough to be justified. You are justified. Christ justified you and me when he died on that cross. Yeah. See, that's what God did for us through Christ. Jesus. Someone says, well, I, I know you've got to do some works. Listen, that'll, that'll come later. See, it's like getting married. The kids come later. Some people have that backwards, I know. But anyway, <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to work. Now look what it says. Acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God. Everybody need to see themselves they have a right standing with God. Amen. Can't get no better. That's it. Christ did it for you. I'm not talking about your behavior. That's another subject. Say behavior, behavior. is another subject. Is another subject. Some, of Some of you might need to brush up on your behavior a little bit. Let me see if I can spot any of you out there. <laughs> I better not judge because if I judge, I'll be judged too. So I cancel that out. All right, look. Given a right standing with God through faith. Everybody say through faith. Through faith. Not through works. Through faith. You're justified. You're acquitted. You're declared righteous and given a right standing with God through what? Faith. 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 See, you've got to see that. Mm -hmm. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So that's why it takes faith. Where did you get the faith? God gave it to you. Amen. God gives every man a measure of faith. Look, let us grasp the fact. 
that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy. Hallelujah. Are you enjoying it? Woo! Somebody say, woo! Oh, you coming along now, I'm telling you. Yes, sir, you get happy in this thing. What the Lord has done, man, he's done something wonderful. People going around trying to justify themselves. You ain't going to get no more justified than that possum I caught the other day in my trap. I caught two of them. Boy, I'm full of possum. I tell you, I just had enough. All right, look, we have the peace of reconciliation made friendly again with God. God ain't mad at nobody no more. He's already made peace through his son, Jesus Christ. That's the good news. That's what gospel means. Gospel means good news. Peace of reconciliation, to hold and to enjoy. Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the only one. See, God is a God of peace. If you are experiencing peace, you are experiencing God, because God is the God of peace. It says the God of peace will strengthen you, perfect you. He has declared us righteous in his sight. Now, if you want to argue with God, just go ahead and argue with God if you want to. But i tell you what, I've come to a point in my life, I ain't going to argue with God. I'm just going to agree with what God says. Are you there yet? How many still arguing with God? God, we got some sanctified folk in here. (laughs) Ain't nobody arguing with God. That is great, man, I tell you. Ain't no need to argue with God. Just accept what the Lord has done by faith. If he says you're righteous, you're righteous. If he says you've been acquitted, you've been acquitted. All charges drop. Jesus paid the price. Now, everybody got excited with that and say, and then Paul says, you know, where sin abounds, grace abounds more. And some Folks pick that up and say, wow, that's pretty good. Uh, I can send all I want to and, and there'll be plenty of grace there to cover me. Yeah, well, that's not bad at all. And Paul said, no, you got it all wrong. That ain't the way it works. Let's see what he says. All right, let's turn to uh, Romans 6, verse 1. Here we go. We're going to dive into this. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. They have to speak to that thing. Romans 6, verse 1. <laughs> what shall we say to all of this? I want to do that again. What shall we say to all of this? In verse 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then you come up to 6, and he's saying, What shall we say to all of this that I just mentioned? That we've all been justified, declared righteous in the eyes of God by what Christ did on the cross. Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? He's asking a question. All right, I'm glad that y'all hear that. (laughs) We would say, Lord, how does it work? Say, see, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yes, I know just a little bit about it. See, that's how God's love does. That's the Holy Spirit that's been given to us. Yeah. And then, see, we struggle till we find, uh, uh, we come to a place in our life and we lose half our hair and Wrinkles all get in our face and we finally come to the conclusion that it ain't no more I that liveth, but it is Christ that liveth within me. And I said, if I'd have learned that, you know, when I was 20 and 30 years old, I'd probably have more hair on my head. It's Christ in us. It's Christ that lives his life through us. Now you've got to find that. You've got to accept that by faith. And until you learn that, you will struggle day and night 24-7. Because, see, as Christ lives his life, the Bible says in, in Romans 8, uh, chapter 2, for the, for the law of the spirit of life, everybody say life, life, has set me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. 
Life. See, there's a new life that comes into you when you receive Christ. It's a new life. Everybody say life. It's the, it's the life of Christ. That sets us free from the law of sin and death, which is always trying to, well, to please somebody or please God. And if I, if I do a whole lot more of this, I know, I know he'll accept me now. No, you come as you are and you believe what God did, Christ did on that cross for you. That is it. Christ alone based on nothing else but what Christ did for us at Calvary. Fully justified, fully acquitted, fully redeemed. Paul, uh, John was, what manner of love is this? And John, 1 John 3, 1, what manner of love is this that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God? See, until you understand that and, and, and get acquainted with that and begin to see your new identification in Christ. We are not connected to the old Adam no more. The old Adam was crucified on the cross. That's right, sister. You're old Adam. That's right, brother. You're old Adam. Crucified. Buried. Some folks dig him up every once in a while. Like on a Saturday night, you know, you <laughs> dig him up and, you know, just, just, just one more Saturday night, Lord, you know, let the old man have his way, you know. No, keep him in the grave. <laughs> Reckon yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. And you accept it by faith. Everything is by faith from beginning to end. It's by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We speak what we believe. Lord, I don't want to speak what I feel this morning. Good to see y'all. I am what I am by the grace of Bob Tilton. No. I got that wrong. Yeah. By the grace of God. Unmerited favor. I didn't earn it. You can't do nothing to earn it. And the quicker you accept what the Lord has done. Here's the thing. You fall in love with God. Oh, oh, do you fall in love with God? I remember the day I fell in love with my wife, Susan. Give me five, baby. <laughs> don't tell me that didn't change me. Some of you don't. I ain't going that way. When I married that girl, that love that I had for her wanted me to please her. I love to hear those amens come out of that corner over there. See, that's just the way love is. You, you can't help from loving people. That's just what is manifested out of you. You don't have to try. You don't have to. Mm, mm. How many's ever done that? Mm. What are y'all laughing at? Mm. On the potty, straining. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there, straining. I ain't going that way. Listen, the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of Christ flow automatic. That's how you know it's from God. Because when you strain at it, it's from the old man. But it just flows. When, I, when I, my first daughter was born, I, I, I couldn't describe to you that, that little wrinkled thing. That, it's all wrinkled up, you know, and... I said, honey, how are we going to get them wrinkles out of there? You got an iron? You going to iron them out? Of there? Oh, she had that mother instinct. Oh, no, they fell out. Boy, have they filled out. I'm telling you. They were <laughs> Christ in you 
is our only hope of glory. Amen. So get your mind off yourself and get your mind on Jesus. Amen. I woke up this morning with with Jesus on my mind. I remember when I married Susan, I'd tell you what, not when I married her, but I mean I did too. After I married, I'd go to work, I think of Susan. But when I was dating her, I woke up in the morning, woo, with Susan on my mind. I woke up this morning with Susan on my mind. I go to work with Susan on my mind. Come on, some of you ain't never been there, you don't know what love is, man. I'm waking some of you up. Well, Brother Bob, it's been so long ago. I'm trying to wake you up. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm in love with Jesus. And Jesus is in love with me. And we have a love affair going on. And a lot of things I don't do anymore because his love, his goodness has just worked in me to where he flows out of me now. And if you see any good thing in me, it's Jesus. Oh, Bob is really growing. No, really, I tell you, it's just Jesus. Amen. That's what you see. See, some folks don't really know what real Christianity is. Real Christianity is you allowing Christ to be Lord of your life, and he flows in and out of you 24-7, and you don't have to strain out at all. Okay, let's get into the Word of God now. Now, what I want is somebody to be a sin. Not everybody one time. Now, wait a minute. I need a volunteer for somebody to be sinned. Boy, look at all the volunteers I'm getting. I'd pick on Floyd, but we get him all the time. We need a, ch we need a change. I need somebody to be sinned over here. Come on now, don't... You know how much you love... Hello, sin. Is I in? <laughs> All right. Here's sin. Now I need I need a Christian man. We have any in here at all? Not everybody one time. Uh, who are you looking at, sin? Here you come. Huh? Here you come. Right here. Oh, he's coming. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, you you're the Christian man now. Okay. Now I want you to get over here by sin. See, see. Oh, my back. Oh. <laughs> now, now, before you was converted, sin had charge over you. And you did everything he told you to do. And you loved it. So don't pretend you didn't, okay? Let's go to the club. <laughs> you know, Paul uses illustrations like... While you, while you were still in uh, a sinner, you know, you know, you know it's like, like you, he yielded to, like a slave. See, a slave yields to the master. Mm -hmm. me. But something happened. Jesus. If we got Jesus is in here. Not everybody one time. <laughs> Charles, come on up here be Jesus. <laughs> Get ahead of me, son. <laughs> All, right, we're, all right, here's Jesus. All right. Now, sin. There's sin. <laughs> he calls on the Lord. He accepts Jesus. Okay, so you come over here with come Jesus. Over here, man. Okay. Thank now, you. Thank you. Now, what's going to happen with the sin? We're going to crucify him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. You can, you can get a... You can get a... Now... But here's the thing about it is, he's crucified. He, and, and, and when Christ died on the cross, he died with him. But he likes to hang around the outer man. So he, he's going to come over here. But now he knows that sin was crucified at Calvary. And here's what he's going to say. Oh, oh sin's going to try to get him on a Saturday night to yeah. go back to the bars. Yeah, yeah. Help me, Jesus. Yeah, oh, help, me. Oh, help me. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Come out here, sin. <laughs> All right. Well, that, 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 that's a start. That's a starter. But then he knows that sin was crucified, uh -huh. that sin used to be his master, and he was a slave to sin, but sin was crucified. And now what he does, he says, I reckon you to be dead. 
but I'm alive under God. And we're going to go downtown and witness tonight. Right. Listen, Saturday, we're going to go downtown. You, you, you dead. You, you, you're not in charge of him no more. But, you, but he's got to learn to put you off. Because, see, you still want to hang around and go out on a Saturday night. No, it was done at, it was done at Calvary. It was done at Calvary. That's right. It's a done deal. Okay, y'all sit down before you get in trouble. <laughs> See, Paul said, there's no good thing in my flesh. But then he goes over and says, uh, you need to acknowledge all the good things that you have in Christ Jesus our Lord. So in, in, in your flesh, there's no good thing. Sunday morning, you're not ready to come up. The old man's not ready to get up and want to go, get up and go to church. Now, he's always ready for dinner. But he ain't wanting to get up, and, you know. So you've got to learn to put him off. Say, put him off. Put him off. Let's see, let me see. Can you stand here for a minute? Now, I'm going to try to get your wallet because I know there's some, got to be something good in it. Woo. All right, now what you going to do when I try to get hey, your... Hey, hey, watch it, fella. Huh? Hey, hey, what you doing, man? Stay over there. <laughs> Y'all saw that pushing the pastor around. You saw. <laughs> he just put put him off. Put him off. Put him off. And say, thank you, Lord. That old man died. Died with Christ. But see, if you don't come to that understanding and get your mind renewed, you're so uh, acquainted with the old man, you're not fully acquainted with the new man yet, and you've got to get to know him. You've got to get to see it and understand that he, he has power in God. And you don't have to uh, give in to the temptations. So here's simply, if, if something happens to me, if somebody makes me mad, this is what I do. Susan. Get them. <laughs> no, no, if you make me, look, I know exactly what to do. Reckon myself, say reckon, reckon myself, myself to be dead, to be dead. Indeed, indeed, unto, where's sin at? Right. To sin, but I'm alive, alive. unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. Now what's so hard about that? Now here's what you've got to understand. God honors his word. If you don't speak his word, he's waiting for you to speak his word and he'll honor what you speak when you speak his word. And when you say, I'm dead indeed unto sin, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. The Holy Spirit goes to work and right away that old man gets less and less and the new man gets stronger and stronger. Amen. Very simple, it's not complicated. But you've got to see that, and you accept that by faith. All right? Susan says, honey, would, would, would you uh, vacuum the carpet? I ain't going to vacuum no carpet. Instantly, now the Holy Spirit will deal with me. Just like that. And he'll say, yes, you is. <laughs> <laughs> No, he, he'll, he'll, he'll let me know. That's no way to speak to your wife. So I had to learn not to speak like that to Susan. And, and as I learned to do that, see, the Holy Spirit was guiding me now. Now, if I speak bad to Susan to get released from that, because you see, you get what you sow. So I'll come, to, and instantly the Holy Spirit showed me, and I said, honey, I, I didn't mean to, to talk to you like that. Uh, anybody hear that? You see, if God forgives me, she knows she's got to forgive. Suppose she didn't forgive me, and she sins, and she asks God to forgive her. God ain't going to forgive her until she forgives me. Are you listening, church? Yep. I'm trying to get you delivered here today. Get yourself caught up and forgive everybody. Your daddy, your mama, your grandpa, Uncle Tom that lived next door, Aunt Susan that lived down the street. That's right. Next door neighbor that gave you that rattlesnake <laughs> stew and you thought it was chicken. 
You got to forgive. Everybody should forgive. Yeah. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one on you, and this is a rough one. Uh-oh. This is rough, man. Are you ready for this one? I don't know if y'all can take this or not. But you got to forgive yourself. Hello? You got to forgive yourself. Just forgive yourself like Christ forgave you. And this is how you keep your freedom. You stay freedom free inside because you're forgiving everybody. Oh, I don't like what they did. I, I can see if they're lazy or indifferent to the things of God or they this or they that. I, I see all that, but I still love them. Because, you see, I let God do that work in me. Because the Bible says God has begun a good work in us and he will continue that work under the coming of the Lord. Now, you got something in your life that you, you, it seems like it's always dominating you. Look, God, take care of it. Here's what you do. You just go and you say, Father, I get angry every time somebody looks at me straight. Admit that you have a problem with anger. By the way, does anybody have any problem with anger in here? Look. One, two, buckle my shoe. Look at it. my hands bobbing. Man, we having a pop popcorn meeting here. Well, listen, that's okay. Be angry, but what? Sin not. Hey, I got you, didn't I? But you don't want to walk around angry because you're destroying your own self. See, sin ain't so much for the other feller. I'm sorry, sin. Forgiveness is not for the, so much for the other feller, it's for us, for you. When you forgive, you get released. Health begins to function again. See, forgiving people is for you. For me, if I forgive, it's for me. You've got to remember that. So do yourself a favor, just walk in forgiveness. Says to me, I can make a mistake and she's done forgive me before I even say, honey, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. She's done forgive me. Same thing with me. When you do something to me, I, you're forgiven. Let God be Lord in your life. Now, let's follow this and we're going to have to knock off because I got to. Here we go. What shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? Next verse. Paul says, certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Certainly not. That's the answer that Paul gives. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Now you've got to see something here. See, I died to sin. Now you get that nailed down in your heart, in your mind. You died to sin. You don't have to obey it no more. Oh, it's going to pull at you. But you died to it. That's, that's, look, sin is there. Sin ain't dead, but you died. The Bible says we've died to the law. Romans 7, we died to the law. The law was there, but we died to it. He takes us out of the equation. We died from the law, but we have the lawgiver living in us, and he directs us and guides us in the things of God. How many, how many would like to have a, uh, the Ten Commandments, you know, on a board you have to read, but when you have the lawgiver living in you, he's the one that directs and guides you. Okay, certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Now, Suppose you're walking along and you see that and, and, and uh, you see there's one thing, <clears throat> you can fall in sin, but practicing sin is different. How I many understand what I'm saying? We all are, are, are candidates to maybe fall in sin sometimes, but living in it, practicing it 24-7, that's another thing. John brings that up, how can you if you've been born again? You can't do that, but you can fall in sin. But suppose you do fall in sin. Who can tell me what you would do? First John 1 John 1.9. Put it on the board. First John 1.9. 
See, there are certain verses of Scripture you must know if you walk with God. 1 John 1, 9, most of us know it by heart. If thy will confess with thy mouth, you'll be saved. But if thy confess with thy mouth that you have sinned, and don't say, I haven't sinned, when you know you have sinned, if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, now notice this, he, who is he, God, is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will, in purpose, thought, and action. Okay, now, you do that, now you gotta do something else. You gotta accept his forgiveness. See, I, I can tell you right now, some of you are you're real good in confessing, but you're not receiving his forgiveness. That's where the release comes in. Confess and receive his forgiveness. And the next day, the devil will bring that sin across your mind. And what you will do is say, what sin? Because God, once he forgives us and we accept his forgiveness, he don't remember it no more. That's what justification means. Just as if you have never sinned. Now the devil's been working on some of you day and night. And you, mo you feel like you're not even fit to be called a child of God. But I'm here to tell you. If you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've received him into your heart. You're a child of God. And you know the battle. Right there in between those two ears. Right there in your mind. That's why our minds have to be renewed. That's where our emotions are up there. Can you honestly say right now, you are clear from all sin? You don't have to raise your hands, but ask yourself that question. Every one of us should definitely say, I'm clear from all sin. I wouldn't, couldn't, I wouldn't come in this building with a sin on me. I take care of all that at home. Hello? When I come in here, man, I'm free. I'm forgiven. I'm cleansed. I'm righteous. I'm holy. Amen. And if I'm out there and, 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 and I make a mistake, instantly, the, my heavenly father to me, we, we, we talk. I say, Lord, and you know, you, you, you'll grow to a point that, yeah, you sinned and you didn't like that and you sort of hurt because you did, but you're hurt more because you displeased your father. Are you listening? The type of relationship that, that, that God will have with each one of his children is that, that I don't want to displease him. I don't. I don't want to displease him. And so if I do make a mistake in sin, knowing that I displeased my heavenly father hurts me more, I think, than actually the sin I did. How many understand that? Okay, so you grow to that point, okay? But you gotta see yourself, you died with Christ, when Christ died on that cross, you died with him. When he was buried, you were buried with him. And when he rose from the dead, you rose with him. And when he ascended into heaven, you ascended with him. And when he sat down at the right hand side of the Father, that's where we're seated right now. You gotta see that. How many of you know God could be up there and down here at the same time? How many of you know we could be up there and down here at the same time? That's God. Seated with Christ in heavenly places, Ephesians chapter 2. Wow. But see, you've got to get all that in your heart and in your mind and begin to understand what the Lord has done. And it changes your whole outlook on yourself and everybody else. Wow, what the Lord has done. I want you to put a scripture up there on 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Someone says, I've heard that before. I know, and I'll probably keep putting it up there because that's why you're going to learn it. Phil says, I, I've heard that before. I know, Phil. And next thing you know, he'll be preaching it. You just keep, keep these scriptures. Look what it says. 13. Yeah. 413. That's 15. That ain't too bad. 13.
Paul is speaking. When you read the Bible, find out who's speaking. Paul is speaking. He said, yet we, well, who in the world can we be? Well, Paul and his associates, uh, the Corinthians, the group of people that he has around him, people that he's talking to. We have the same spirit of faith as he had. Well, we looked that up and we found out it was uh, uh, in the book of Psalms 116, verse 10. You'll see that he's talking about David. So he is David had, David had the same faith who wrote, David wrote. I have believed, uh, uh, David said, and therefore have I spoken. And then Paul jumps in there and says, we too. We, me, you, Corinthians, Hanahan, we too believe, and therefore we speak what we believe. Learn to speak what you believe. Do you still believe you're just an old sinner? Do you still believe that you're just a nobody? Well, I'm here to tell you, Christ didn't die for nobody. You are, if you've been born again, you are a child of God. You speak what you believe. You get into the word of God and find out what the Lord has done for you. And I know many of you have, and I'm trying to encourage you. Because there's no need to ask God for something you already got. So right now, I believe this. I believe that I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus my Lord. I believe that the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed me from all sin. I believe that I've been justified by the blood of Jesus. I believe that I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I can't get no more redeemed. I can't get no more justified. Now, I, we are in a sanctifying mode, and we are being sanctified every day. That's another story there. He deals with our behavior patterns and some of our thinking, what I call stinking thinking. But your, your name is written in the last book right now. Everybody say, my name, my name. is written in the Lamb's book Amen. of life. Amen. Now, if that don't do something for you, I'll just pray for you. Because I realize that our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You know, when that final moment comes, when you have about two minutes, to, you're going to live. You've got two minutes to live, and, you, and you're going you're gonna to leave planet Earth. Two minutes. Let's see what my bank account is. <laughs> Don't let nobody drive my car when I'm gone. <laughs> Everything you thought was so dear to you is zero. The only thing that will matter is you and God are arm in arm. Amen. And all is well with your soul. You've walked this old road down here and you've learned to reckon yourself dead to every emotion and feeling. See, the devil could throw all this stuff in you. You, you, you just, all of a sudden you feel like nobody loves me. That's a lie. You start believing that and it'll get inside of you and, that's, and you'll act that out. And No, no, you've got to realize what the Lord has done. But the devil constantly throw those lies in your mind. Constantly. Constantly. And you start believing those lies and you go down and you can't enjoy your Christian life. You don't want to go to church no more because you get under condemnation and it's a vicious circle. But when you realize and you walk 24-7 in the knowledge that God has given to us in that word and you walk that out, it's a joyful life. Somebody comes and persecutes you, you say, it's all joy. Good old joy. Joy here, joy here. God has done a great thing. So when we see somebody water baptized, I want you to think of yourself. The water don't save you, but it's a picture of your death, burial, and resurrection in Christ. If water would save you, we'd just get a bucket full and shoo, shoo. I got plenty of water. I got a hose over there. I shoot you down like that. Oh. <laughs> I'll get them good and saved, Lord. <laughs> You're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's what you speak. That's what you believe. You believe what God has told you. 
every day, 24 seven. And I still, I still uh, find Christians say, well, I'm just an old sinner. No, you're not, you were a sinner, but now that you're saved, you're a son of God. You are a saint. I didn't say you couldn't sin. I don't want to sin. Well, what is sin? The Bible says anything that's not of faith is sin. So you get your mind on who you are in Christ and fall in love with him because he, he has fallen in love with you. He loves you so much. He loves me so much. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm with you always. Boy, would you just nail that down in your soul, in your, in your life. And your whole walk is different. Someone, Brother Bob, did you hear what so-and-so said about you? No, I didn't, and I don't care, and I don't want to hear it, and don't tell me. <laughs> because I don't care what they said, I love them. I said I love them. Yeah, yeah you don't think I know? Watch me. <laughs> Say, I love them. I, I know my daddy said this, I love him. I know my mama said this, I love her. Excuse me. <coughs> Get rid of that one right now. Hallelujah. Say, I love myself. I love myself. Oh, you just stepped over a big stone there. Because until you can love yourself, you're just going to run around with a bear, with a just, we won't go that way. You've got to realize. Now, I'm going to ask you, if, if, if God loves you, who are you not to love yourself? Now think about that for a while, Phil. Amen, Pastor. That's great. If God loves you, who are you not to love yourself? If God loves you, who are you not to love yourself? If God loves you, who are you not to love yourself, Dave? Give me five, son. Good to see you, buddy. See, I love myself. And God loves me. I'm in love. I'm in love, I am in love with Jesus, and Jesus is in love with me. See, it's a love affair. Did you know that God loves you as much as he loves Jesus? Now think about that. St. John 17. Wow. You'd be surprised how your life will change when you start loving yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's why a lot of people are throwing rocks at their neighbors. They don't love themselves, so they throw rocks at their neighbors. <laughs> and once they start loving themselves, they'll love their neighbors as they love themselves. They'll start taking biscuits and fried chicken over there. <laughs> and eat a little bit on the way over. <laughs> you see, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and chapter 14, there's, a, there's 13 right in the middle. That's the love. It's like a sandwich. You got, you got that love right there, and you take this, this uh, uh, chapter um, 12, and, and then there's 13. That's all love of Jesus. And then you put 14 on, and you got a good sandwich right there. When you bite into it, you got love. I'm in love with you. Did you know I better love the body of Christ? Let me tell you, this, uh, this is heavy, and then I'm going to quit. Are you ready? If I don't love you... I'm worse than a murderer. Is that in the Bible? Yep. How many knows that's in the Bible? Let's see your hand. You search it out. I ain't going to give it to you, but it's in John, 1 John. <laughs> well, I don't love that brother down at the church. Well, you don't, uh, you're in bad shape, son. You're just like a murderer. Whew. Did I open a keg of worms or did I? Boy, that'll change your thinking in a hurry. Say, I love you, Pastor Bob. Hey, you better. Because you're in trouble if you don't. And if I don't love you, I'm in trouble. Can't be out to get you, won't it, son? Good to see you, son. I love you. Love you, honey. Wonderful. You better. All right, let's get ready for water baptism. Go back in the back room with um, Morgan. 
And we had another sister, but she didn't make it today, so we'll baptize little Morgan and uh, sort of relive your own water baptism and realize that you're a brand new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Hallelujah. Okay. This calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you? believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Okay, the Bible says then you saved. Okay, he does the saving. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, now I want you to hold your nose. Okay. Okay, you ready? I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ. Buried with Christ, risen, risen to walk in the newness of life. Hey! Father, I thank you right now for the blessings of God that's upon her. Fill her with the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' name. And may all the gifts of the Spirit operate in her life. And I break all curses over her for many generations back. She's free, and Christ has set her free on that cross. And I thank you for it. She's a new creature in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so aren't you glad your old life has been buried? You know, don't dig it up no more now, okay? It's been buried, leave it buried, and thank God that he did it for you, and you accept it by faith. And I look out there, and all I see is just God's children smiling at me. God bless you all. Hope to see you real soon. God bless you. Okay, all right, what you got? want to remind you guys that if uh, you want to stay for dinner afterwards please do but I have a special announcement ma y'all know next week I told y'all I told y'all I was gonna let y'all know what time it is it's gonna be Willie's birthday celebration <laughs> so that means now I, I, I've been fortunate some of the folks have been bringing in little goodies here and there but y'all know my favorite so I'm telling everybody, cook your best, because I'm going to eat my best. <laughs> so bring your goodies, because we're going to throw down. Yes. Yes, sir. Who? Willie, your birthday was yesterday? Oh, well, see, now, see? Boy, you got two Willies. Willie's time. Oh, man, that's like a nuclear bomb right there, y'all. That's like a bomb right there. Okay, and I'll go ahead. So, so now, so, and Mr. Sammy, Sammy who? Sammy, Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> no, Mr. Sammy's going to come and celebrate your birthday with us. All right, all right. Nineteen. Yeah, I'm nineteen and holding. I act like it. <laughs> so. So yeah, so so Willie, who else has a birthday in the month of February? Anybody else? Just me and Will? Well, bring lots of ice cream, because y'all know, 
What is it, Floyd, called? The secret? What's the. the S-I-C-C. Okay, whatever that means. The Secret Society of Ice Cream. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead and bless the food. And um, don't, don't forget me and Willie next week now. I'm going to tell you now. I, I told him I'm coming up here to make the announcement, so I'm letting everybody know. Okay, anyways, <laughs> let's bless the food. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you, Lord, that we can laugh and we can have fun in church and yet still learn your truths, Father. Oh, man, what a good thing to, to be able to do. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that your blessing will be upon each and every family and everyone rep represented here. Lord, thank you for little Morgan. And, Lord, we just are so excited to see not only in her life but in all these young people's lives where you're going to be taking them down the road, Lord. So bless the young people overall, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I also ask that you will please bless the food. Let it be nourishment to our bodies and let our bodies be committed to your service, Lord. We ask this now in Jesus' name and all God's party people say, Amen. Amen. <laughs>